Hey guys, in this video we're going to learn how to turn it off. So the Spanish word apagado literally means to be turned off. And in some flamenco transcriptions you might see this symbol of a bracket next to a rest. And what that's telling you to do is to kill the music, to turn it off. But it's easier said than done. There's two ways that we can turn things off, and that's with the left hand or the right hand. Pretty tricky though, let's take a look at the left hand first. So what I was doing at the beginning was this. <laughs> killing it with my pinky there. That looks pretty simple, but at first it is not simple because what you're likely to do is to take your finger and slam it over the strings. But what we're trying to get is silence. We'll see this in a minute too with the right hand. As we're trying to practice this and get better at it, we can very easily make a big loud slapping noise, which we absolutely don't want because we're trying to turn it off. So to illustrate what we're gonna be doing in the left hand, let's first play a bar chord. Now bar chords are the necessary evil of guitar, uh, but there's one good thing about them. I think only one thing, and that's this you can get an instant apagado by just relaxing your left hand. Hit the strings and just relax. And when you do that, you still have contact with the strings. That's kind of keeping them from sounding. But we're not pressing in, but we never lose contact with the strings. So the strings are depressed on the chord, and then they come away from the frets as you relax, but we never lose contact. That's what we need to do down here when we're playing an open chord. If you have the benefit, and it's a benefit only, I, I think in this case of apagado, to have bar chords, it's easy enough to get the apagado just by relaxing. I would practice that first. Great technique for so every single style of guitar music that you possibly could play. You need to be able to do that. But when you're doing it with an open chord, it's, it's a pretty problematic. What we want to do is, these two fingers on, on E minor obviously are squeezing in there, but I need to kind of relax them as my pinky comes down here. The biggest um, obstacle here is like most people, myself included, our pinky is the weakest finger, right? So we're using our weakest finger to do something here that's pretty delicate. But I'm getting completely straight with my pinky, absolutely straight, touching all of the strings. I can feel it kind of, I'm pressing in, but I'm not pressing in so much so that the strings move at all. Because if I do, I'm going to hit the frets like that. At the same exact time, I'm relaxing with these fingers so that the strings come up. Because if I don't, what actually can happen is your finger can cover all these strings, but because these are still pressed in, we'll still hear them underneath that pressed in apagado finger, right? So we, if we can, we want to relax right here. So see if you can look at these two fingers as I do this, watch. See, it's not just the pinky, it's also these two fingers relaxing. You can see them coming up, but I'm never losing contact with the strings. You may have just heard a harmonic there. That's another problem that, that could happen. Like we end up sounding a harmonic that we don't want. So you might move your finger around and find a place that's a little more dead. But it's very, very common to hear this kind of thing. There it is. I turned it off. In flamenco guitar, you so often hear these triplets and it's ended very abruptly. It really gives it more drama when we cut it off quickly like that. It really stands out a, a lot more. You might not ever have noticed, but the apagado happens all the time in rumbas. We hear it all the time. Here's a basic rumba rhythm. Very basic. An accent on the and of two. One and two. I'm going to do an apagado right after the end of two. I mean, absolutely right after the end of two, like this. Now, you almost never see people do it the way that I just did it because it's too hard and weird, especially when you're going fast. That's why for rumbas, we do the apagado with the right hand, like this. It's a lot more manageable. The biggest danger in doing the apagado with the right hand is that you're very, very likely to accidentally do a slap, which we do also all the time, right? Here's another rumba we could do. One and two and three. Slapping on the three. Okay, that's not an apagado, right? The sound does stop, but I'm creating also a percussive sound, which is a sound, right? But where, so there's a, it's kind of a subtle difference, but watch this. That's two different rumba patterns. Silence and without a percussive effect, right? It's so quick and sharp that it almost sounds like percussion, weirdly enough, but it's like matter and antimatter. It's like we silenced it and it created a, a loud sound, um, but it didn't at the same time. Very, very weird, but very cool. That's the apagado. Now, if I slap it a little bit later than the apagado, we have a different pattern. But you totally can mix these. You can also do repeated apagados in a rhythm like this. 
I have something rattling around in my guitar, so you're not hearing perfect silence every time my microphone is loose. So doing the apagado with the right hand really helps with the rumba, especially when you go fast. But what if you wanted to do a bunch of apagados in a row? I just did it with the right hand a minute ago, but it really wasn't very fast. But what if you need to do it this fast? I gotta do it with the left hand, watch. <laughs> The right hand just can't keep repeatedly recovering that motion as quickly as we would want it to in that case. This is what you might hear like in a faruka or something like that. One and two and three. So it's all situational. It depends on what you need to do and how fast you need to do it to determine which hand we should use. Exercise time. Let me give you a great exercise so we can work on the right hand and the left hand. Apagado in the left hand and the four stroke rasgueo in the right. I love the combined techniques like that together. We can really kill two birds with one stone. And we're gonna go like this. Let's play an A minor chord. We're gonna be doing apagados all over the place in between each of these strokes like this. That's a really great way to cultivate that habit of being able to just on the fly kill those strings. Now, if you're having trouble with this, like I said earlier, start with the bar chords. But then after that, instead of an open chord, play no chord at all, open strings, and just practice going like this. And it doesn't just have to be your pinky. It all depends on the chord that you're holding. So I would take each finger and practice something like this. Hit all the strings you're trying to touch, trying to create silence, right? And then middle finger. Great little coordination exercise. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out my membership where I teach you all kinds of nylon string stuff from flamenco, classical, bossa, tons of stuff in my membership. All my courses, tabs, and challenges, and a lot more. Check that out at theversatileguitarist.com slash membership. And if you want to get more training on that Roomba rhythm, check out this video where I show you how to play a Roomba just like the Gypsy Kings.